So, 2016 was a year, wasn't it? Actually, wait, was it? I mean, sure, we had a lot of political turmoil and celebrity deaths this year, but then again, we have that just about every year since 2009. So, you know, it's not like that's anything new. I think a lot of times on YouTube, people want to get views. So at the end of the year, they come onto YouTube and they start saying that last year was the worst year ever because it's negativity that everybody can agree with. And negativity always seems to get views. But then again, based on these 10 songs, they might have a point. I'm going to be basing this list solely on the following. It's going to be songs that made the year-end Hot 100 for 2016 on Billboard, but did not make the year-end Hot 100 for 2015 on Billboard. This is really the most objective way I can think of to say that it was a hit in 2016. That means there's going to be some weird exclusions, but also some inclusions that people might not necessarily agree with. I'm going with an objective criteria, though. However, the order of these songs isn't necessarily objective. Okay, I think I've been stalling long enough. Let's start this torture session. Cut it. Cut it. Get. Cut it. Cut it. You guys remember OT Genesis, right? Y y you know, the Coco guy. I'm in love with the Coco. Yeah, well, apparently he came back this year with a friend. And boy, do I want to punch his friend in the face. What the fuck? Okay, I think the whole Twitter rap thing has gone way too far. That seriously counts as a bottle. Ah. You know, if you were going to do that staticky delivery thing, you could have just said Porsche, right? I'll be honest, Young Dolph is the main reason this song even makes this list, since OT Genesis is actually fairly competent. And although the chorus is pretty repetitive, it's not like it's, you know, as bad as the rest of this list. Which is why it's at the bottom of it. That's kind of how these things work. Sussing, sussing, sussing on you. The song is somewhat enjoyable beat work. Well, sure, it's serious and somber for a song about a white dude who's comparing himself to a black basketball player using skills that have nothing to do with basketball. It's got an enjoyable flow, even if the lyrics are kind of a paint-by-numbers braggadocious type of thing. And, you know, at the very least, he ties the lyricism in with the basketball concept. So uh, why is this worse than OT Genesis? Well, that's very simple. Instead of having one part of the song where someone's doing something that they really are not very good at, Post Malone does something he sucks at the entire time, and that's singing. Post doesn't even grab a bucket to help him carry a tune, and it shows. With the only person I can think of that gave a worse vocal performance being Rich Homie Kwan. I mean, it may be the only thing that he did wrong, but it's more than enough to put him on the worst list on its own. Is it bad that I enjoy this song on an ironic level? The whole song is complete nonsense, which is not helped by designers' much mouth delivery. But it's almost like that's the point. This is a song that's very easy to laugh at. I mean, something about the tongue rolling in the background and the fact that the song is called Panda, even though the car that's supposed to look like a panda is really more of a background element. It made me think that it was intentionally bad. It doesn't make it any better, though. It just means that there's only so high I can really put it on this list. Well, designer's done worse this year. Like, for example. Okay, a serious question. Does anybody remember any lyrics to this song outside of the hook? It's not nonsense like Panda, but to be honest, that kind of makes it worse. In my Black Beatles review, I called out this song for having a concept that it does nothing with. But what I really think killed this song for me was the auto-tune slathered all over everything. It actually sounds good on the chorus, but then we get it on the verses and it sounds like dog shit. I hate to say this, designer, but uh, you have managed to go below my very low expectations of you. Please don't let the rest of your next album be this trashy. Please. We don't talk anymore. We don't talk any Fuck this song. Fuck Charlie Puth for writing it. Fuck Selena Gomez for writing it. I don't know who the fuck Jacob Casher Hinlin is, but you know what? Fuck him too. 
This is the pinnacle of lazy songwriting and singers that do not sound like they give a shit. And it is representative of the oversaturation of Tropical House from this year. This is definitely the number one offender in the genre though. Mostly because duets between two sopranos just never work. Everything just sounds the same. I think the fact that this is only number six on this list is an indicator of how bad this year has been. Oh, by the way, also this. <laughs> Because, you know, it wouldn't be the Lean On formula if there wasn't a DJ Snake style solo. Seriously, I am so glad that we are done with this tropical house craze. Because this is the reason why it was such a bad thing. You don't gotta go to work, 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 work. I shouldn't really need to explain this one. My review from earlier this year explains perfectly what's wrong with this song. It's repetitive. It tries to be sexy but ends up accidentally shooting itself in the foot. And I didn't really say this in my review, so I guess it's worth saying now. It really makes me want to sleep from home more than work from home. I mean, I guess maybe I was a little bit too hard on Ty Dolla Sign. I mean, look what he had to work with. But, uh, then again, maybe if he didn't try to sing his entire verse too? Stand up in the motor, bust the dash, bro. Stand up. I honestly do not know why everyone from Toronto wants to work with this guy. This song has probably the absolute laziest production of any song all year. Okay, here's how you make this beat, okay? You play three notes, and then you add drums. Oh wait, you occasionally, every eight bars or so, scale stuff up or down so it sounds a little bit different. On top of that, add a bunch of auto-tune all over the track, which, by the way, takes away all of Future's identity, and makes his much mouth delivery that much harder to understand. And you have a recipe for a train wreck. And honestly, if you're gonna make a song where you're bragging all the time, at least make something that sounds a little bit upbeat. Oh, I'm gonna regret that in a few minutes, aren't I? Better than he can. Okay, that alone is enough reason to put it here, but let me go a little bit further on why Sean Mendez can go fuck a chainsaw. Sean Mendez is trying to act like a Genom. I can say it myself, Sean! I don't want to rupture my audience's eardrums with the sound of your voice! Thank you! But there's indications that he's just as much of a dick as the guy he wants her to leave. Which comes off as accidental. Now, I'm not trying to say that this is an indication of Sean Mendez's actual character. Although, I wouldn't be surprised if he turned out to be an ass. I'm just saying that this song tries to be grotesquely sweet and really just winds up coming off sour. And I don't mean sour like a lemon head or those cool sour gummy worms. No, I mean more like spoiled milk. No one gave any fucks. That is the only way that this song could possibly exist. Everyone's completely unintelligible because of reggae. Even though I understand the lyrics to a lot of reggae songs and I can barely understand a single word of this, well, except one. Work, 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 work. The fact that this is one of two highly repetitive pop hits that repeat the exact same word this year makes me want to punch society. I, I, I just want to stop talking about this. Can we please just move on to the number one? Ow! Hey, hey can we go back to the Rihanna song, please? This sounds like an outright parody of pop music. Like, this was meant to be ironic. But the bridge to the chorus is far too sincere for that. Look, I don't have a problem with the fact that this is a bragging song. You guys should probably already know that, considering what's probably on my best list. But at least earn the right to brag a little bit, okay? It, it really doesn't help that the lyrics to this one are just... Just... What's that? I sit dang, hanging around my neck. Mm. That's gold. Show me some respect. Gold is not icy. I ice means diamonds. And I can't help loving myself. And I don't need nobody else. Except for this song's four other- Wait a minute, is that Jacob Casher Hinlon again? Who let him back in the building? Also, didn't you make a song with Charlie Puth last year? A terrible song with Charlie Puth last year. So yeah, I guess you don't need that dude you want to Marvin Gaye and get it on with either. And doesn't your very next fucking single feature Yo Gotti? Yeah, I guess you don't need him either. Which I'm sure he'll appreciate knowing. I never pay for my drinks, my entourage behind me. Or also people you repeatedly admit to not needing. For fuck's sake, at least don't contradict yourself within the song. This song can go die in a dumpster fire made of hypodermic needles for all I care. And hopefully we don't have to deal with anything nearly this bad in 2017. 
Okay. God damn it, I forgot about Silento 3.0. I quit.